Hello, I'm Dale Leftwich with Real Agriculture. Today I'm with one of the new inductees into the Saskatchewan Agricultural Hall of Fame, Arnold Petrachik. Arnold is from Esther Hazy, Saskatchewan. How are you doing today, Arnold? Not bad. Arnold, uh, you had a very interesting start into the uh, agricultural industry. I guess you were supposed to do uh, a master's degree, but you ended up in, right straight into the workforce. How did that go? Well, Dean White passed away that year uh, from the College of Agriculture, and there was a new dean, and he didn't realize that I had a fellowship supposed to be given, and on convocation... I learned after I got married in July that the fellowship was given away. So I had to go into the workforce. And I got employment with Consolidated Mining and Smelting. Uh, The company that had Elephant brand fertilizer had the first phosphate plant in Regina. the company's name got changed to Kaminko, and today, our last few years, was known as Agrim. But going back, I had a, a station at uh, Weyburn uh, for f- four years. I had a short term at uh, Yorkton, and I was moved to Leth- Lethbridge in seven in in '69. In 72, they ran out of product, and uh, I would have had to twiddle my uh, thumbs. I was supposed to go to uh, BC, but uh, the wife wanted to go to New Zealand, and there was jobs opportunity in Australia. So if I couldn't, didn't make a deal with Dad to take over the family farm I, in Estrasi, I would have been off to Australia. God only knows what would have happened then. Right. I guess uh, uh, you were in uh, Lethbridge. You were in Alberta for a while, too. I, I guess uh, times were quite different then. Uh, tell us a little bit about how much fertilizer they were selling in Alberta and how much they were selling back in Saskatchewan. That year was a five-bushel quota in Saskatchewan. And the total consumption of all companies was less than one dealer I looked after in Alberta. So there was more more sold by one dealer in Alberta than all of Saskatchewan is what you're saying? Yes. So you've been on uh, um, a lot of different boards. Can you just say like one of the highlights you were uh, on uh, several different boards, one of the highlights of one of the boards you were on? Well, I have to say... It was Municipal Hill. I served uh, 40 years on Municipal Hill. I saw the company started with $15 million, almost lost it in 82 uh, when there was a major storm. And we ended up uh, getting reassurance. We ended up uh, being the... Uh, largest company of reassurance with stop loss hail insurance and that was in uh, and today the company's well over uh, sales of a uh, billion dollars that was quite a quite a lot of changes that you've seen okay I just really want to thank you Arnold uh, just a full disclose disclosure I used to work for Arnold Petrachik uh, in uh, when he had a SO dealership in Esther Hazy so uh, thanks very much and it's a, a very 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 well deserved honor Arnold thank you and I thank all of the people that made this opportunity available for me it's a pleasure Today I'm with one of the newest inductees into the Saskatchewan Agricultural Hall of Fame, Chantal Donahue. Chantal, how are you doing today? Wonderful, thank you. This is uh, this is a wonderful achievement. You deserve uh, so much. Uh, this is uh, you're you're really involved in all aspects. You're a farmer yourself. You work with Cargill, and you've really worked with uh, social license on a lot of different things. Do you want to just talk a little bit about how you 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 tie those three things together? 
Yeah, absolutely. So at the end of the day, when it comes to social license or building public trust in food, uh, the one recognition that we all have come to is that, you know, it starts right from, you know, the, the inception breeding right through to, a, you know, a, a, a bite of food, right? A, a happy meal or, or whatever it may be. And, and in, in the thing about agriculture and food is everybody's absolutely passionate about it, probably more passionate now than we, we ever have been. You know, if you're a producer, I'm a grain farmer in, in bigger Saskatchewan, uh, you, you love what you do. It is your livelihood, it is your everything right through to the end of the chain when you're feeding your your child a, you know, a, a bun. So one of the big things that's been important to me as we've been on this journey of social license and, and public trust in, in the country is how do we bring everybody to the same table? And, and I'll be honest with you, it's not always easy. When you go to a restaurant or you go to uh, go and buy your child a happy meal, you're not just buying beef and you're not just buying, you know, canola oil that, or potatoes for those fries, right? You're buying all of those, those commodities. So one of the, the most critical components is how do we, as we try to build trust in food, how do we bring all of these industries together? Right? So how do we bring beef and pork and everybody to the table? And it's been quite a journey getting everybody to the same table. And as we know, in agriculture and food is not always easy to do. But I can see on this initiative, this is one of the only initiatives that I know of in the country, that we can have everybody in the room collectively agreeing on what needs to get done. And from my perspective, why do I do it? I have two young daughters at home. And I see a vibrant value-added industry that exists within the province of Saskatchewan and within the country. And if we don't figure it out, we could put, you know, the transition of our farm at risk to our daughters. We could put the resiliency of that industry at risk. Now, if we figure out how to do it and build that trust, boy, that's a good news story. And we are doing a lot of good things. So taking the lens right from mom to grain farm to executive and bringing that across into the country and into the province has been something that I'm absolutely passionate about personally and professionally as well. So one of the things that you've really worked on is this idea, you, you, as I said, and as you've said, you're a mom, you are a farmer, you're an active farmer, and, uh, and you also work with Cargill and in the social license. So all of these things in terms of, like, people need to know that they have to eat and that we have to be doing the, the growing of this food responsibly. And it's very difficult to tie those two together, the people get to people to listen to each other yeah absolutely so I always I, I always say and those of you who know me will know I'm fairly to the point I always say in agriculture and food historically we've done a really good job of talking to ourselves yeah. right you know I'd, I remember being in federal meetings many years ago and I would look to the the province of Saskatchewan and I would say when it comes to public trust you don't need a lot of money to talk to people but guess what the province of Ontario needs funds to talk to Ontario we need to figure out how to how to really bridge that gap right and and so part of this journey is recognizing what are we good at and what where do we have gaps and how do we get better when it comes to communication we have great examples in Saskatchewan Saskanola has done some some work in this other organizations are doing this but we need to go further we need to get better around how understanding how to have conversations that aren't say agriculture based conversations but food conversations with moms with those that make those purchasing decisions in those urban areas rural areas as well absolutely important but more importantly we need to think differently about how we communicate and that's the now that we're all together that's a really big piece of work that we're starting to undertake Okay, I just really want to congratulate uh, Chantal again and thank you very much uh, for taking the time out on this very auspicious day to have a little conversation with me. Thanks a lot, Chantal. Thank you, Dale.